I have been blessed to know our special guest today for 20 years. She's the co-founder of the Rawls Group at Keller Williams here in Atlanta, Georgia. And let me just give you a little bit of numbers on the Rawls Group, if you will. Uh, six offices here in Atlanta, 2,100 lives on board, realtors, and 4.8 billion a year in annual volume. Gene Rawls, welcome to Personal and Professional Best. Thank you so much, Pat, for having me here this morning. It's truly an honor to be here. Well, it's an honor to have you. As one of the co-founders of the Rawls Group, so you started in 1999. Let's go back to that moment where you're thinking there. Did you ever imagine that the story would turn out like this? I knew it would be successful. I never had a picture of success that it would have those figures in it that you just read today of 2,100 lives, the volume, that means the families that we're touching, the people that we're connecting with and assisting in helping them grow their lives to the next chapter, never in a million years, never. Yeah, I find with most people that become really successful when they start the journey, they don't really think about the numbers or anything. They think about what really drives them every day. <clears throat> and those are the bedrock principles, right? The things that matter most. So if you could go back and now think about today, what are the one or two things, bedrock principles that have been the catalyst, the most important part of the success that you've had as your, your business goes? Bedrock principle number one is the passion, the drive for the idea whatever your business idea is, that passion has to be so strong that it will propel you through any obstacle that happens in any day of the week, the month, the year. Along with the passion comes work ethic. You can have all the passion in the world, but if you don't have the work ethic to really create what you're trying to create, and I think those two principles truly you will have success in what you're working towards. Yeah, so knowing what you're doing and why you're doing it, right? The passion, like what it's all about. And I know with you, it's about people, right? Making a difference in the lives of people. Because that, no matter what comes up then, whatever the obst obstacles are, so to speak, in the business, you just work right through it because you've already made a decision in advance about that. That failure is not an option. Failure is not an option. No, it's yeah. not. So who, because in my life, there are a couple of people who have been those real voices of influence in my life from very early to now uh, my wife in my life but who are the people that are in your life one or two people that really were voices of influence that helped shape those bedrock principles the things that you believe in the deepest part of your heart pat i was so blessed the people that have influenced me the most came into my life on day one and it's truly my mother and father and they are not here today but I can honestly say to you that they influence me every day I get up. And what I can tell you is, I was born into a family that had deep commitment to family and deep commitment to work ethic. And it was just by example that I was able to gain the passion that I have in life. So it's hard to express in an interview with you, sure. but number one, if you have a love of life, that number one was given to me so early on, and that does not mean my family did not have difficulties and trials and tribulations, but when you have love of family and a commitment, that goes through a child and you carry it on. So even to this day, when I have business obstacles or personal obstacles in raising my family, I look back on how they would have handled that situation in life. So there is no doubt I have great business mentors today that are alive and that I learn from. Sure. Starting right with the team at Keller Williams of six team leaders. They are my mentors, hopefully as much as I'm their mentor, and we learn from one another. But those fundamental principles of how to really be successful in life through difficult times came from family. And you that's my amazing. mom and dad. <clears throat> mom and dad are not yeah. here now, right? Mm -mm. But mom and dad's legacy continues Absolutely. through the Rawls group. Absolutely. Because those bedrock principles, the values that they instilled in your life early on, the yeah. reason the business exists today. So Absolutely. the best way to honor them is by doing exactly what you're doing. Every Live day. out those values every single day. Yeah. So those people were, um, were really instrumental in your life. And, and so if you would get down to the one or two lessons, it's hard work uh, that they taught you, what else? 
You know, it's interesting. They taught me protection of family. And what does that mean? You know, I would hear them. My parents were both educators. My mother was an English teacher and my father was a professor and guidance counselor. And every day they had a tradition that they would come home and share a cup of coffee at the end of their work day and share what happened. So I saw the collaboration of two adults talking about how difficult the outside world is, what trials they had at school, what trials they had with administration, students, parents. But I saw in that exchange that there was a lightness that they would be able to figure it out together. Mm. And that communication of helping one another, giving advice, and always saying it was well worth it because it was for the family. And, you know, that's truly some of the strongest memories that I have of how you get through difficult days is bringing it back to family. You know, <clears throat> I know you at Keller Williams feel very similar that we do at Supreme, which is my, I have a, my, my family at home, me and Lisa, and mm -hmm. the work we do with our kids at home, or used to do with our kids, now they're adults. But when we come to the workplace, we feel very similar. This is our family in the workplace. And that extension of creating a work environment that the people you work with or your family is the same. So that protection of that work environment, each of those Keller Williams Market Centers, it's really a foundation that was built a long time ago at a kitchen table in Buffalo, New York. You know, it's a reminder to all of us today <clears throat> that are parents, that the voices and what we say, so sometimes just putting down the phone and investing time with our kids is the biggest way to make a difference in their lives. And we have our own challenges and adversities and stresses, but we need to give time Absolutely. so we can speak into our children's lives because obviously things are very challenging these days, right? Well, and I say so many times to agents and to staff, you know, you're not only a mentor to your own children, but you're a mentor to everyone around you. So Absolutely. the actions you're taking, they're absorbing. So whether you have children or not, you have cousins, you have nieces and nephews, you have children of clients that are in your car and they're watching how you conduct yourself and what's important. Awesome. So, so our program's about becoming the best version of ourselves, right? Um, and some people think that when you get to a place like you are in business, <clears throat> that um, it just is easier for you that you've been lucky and more fortunate um, and there's certainly blessings in your life and I know that but they don't think that necessarily you faced off on the same adversities or struggles that they faced. What I found is that most people that have become really successful they don't create their own adversity um, they make choices to keep that from happening but they inevitably face seasons of adversity and storms. Tell us about an example and how you think about overcoming adversity in your life. You know, I think the one that comes to mind the strongest for me happened very early on. So when I was 12, my mother was diagnosed with breast cancer. And it was in the 70s, and technology and medicine was not as advanced. And um, through excellent doctors, they had shared with my father that she would have somewhere between 13 to 15 months to live. And she lived 15 months, and I was 13, and my brother was seven. And what I could tell you, because our family was such a close-knit family, number one, as a child, you can't even imagine not having your mother there sure. and present. But what I have gained through that over the past several decades, we don't need to I talk won't about tell the you how many decades, <laughs> right. um, is the strength that I have gained from losing her so early on. And it has prepared me for every other challenge that has come across my path in life because the way I've looked at it is if I could live through losing someone that was so dear to me and so important and I could continue to thrive and grow, I could make it through the next adversities that came through my life. So there was nothing that couldn't be overcome. Um, so having yeah, that happen early. That's one of the things that I find that the best do is they take what's good from mom, right? The investment, instead of getting bitter about what they've lost, <clears throat> they take the blessing of what they gained and they carry that with them. It's not to make it any easier. It doesn't mean it doesn't have pain with it. It just means that we learn to overcome afterwards. Absolutely, and as I got older, it became really an honor for me to carry her strength and to carry 
her ability to connect with people. She was extremely social. She was a teacher. She was the leader in our family. She's like one of those American heroes. <laughs> well, in, in her daughter's eyes, she well, is. Well, no, and you know what's so interesting? Yeah. Sometimes the simple roles we play yeah. in life, right? They unleash people Absolutely. like yourself who are now affecting so many people. And I'm, I'm grateful that we could kind of bring yeah. them into this interview today, Absolutely. mom and dad. Yeah. Um, and again, a reminder for all of us mom and dads out there just how oh. important, and for all the leaders that are in the audience today about what we mean, the voices that we have, and how they carry into the lives of those that are parents that are working with us every single day. Absolutely. All right, so the program's about personal professional best. What are you working on right now? Like what this year are you working on? Um, to become better personally or professionally? Well, I've got several categories. I think the, one of the most important is making a list of priorities of what I do well so I can focus on those and being really honest and true about what I don't do well and find really talented people to do those things. Because I think number one, and I'm gonna say many women are probably challenged with this, when you have a motherly instinct, you want to take care of everyone and do everything, and nobody can do it better than you. And I think that's been one of my biggest challenges as a leader, is to unleash the 80% that I'm not really great at, let those grow who are really great at that, and flourish and shine, um, and really concentrate on the 20% that is my responsibility as the head of the company to you know, take care yeah, of. You know, we're all gifted differently, right? Yeah. So our natural gifting allows us to be really successful at some things and we ought to use those gifts. I learned the same lesson uh, in business, which is to allow and know that there's others with different gifts that complement our gifts, Absolutely. right? And the combination of all of that makes something even better. And year after year, building that team with the right talent is super exciting. And it's building the family. So as the team expands, the family expands. But I know about the mom thing because Lisa, my wife, um, she works here, she does her job here, but she's a mom at home and still with the boys at 31, 29, they'll occasionally call me, she's still mom at me. I'm Absolutely. Like she's gonna do that the rest of her life. Absolutely. But the other thing I'm working on is giving grace that you cannot be excellent at all things at all times. There are certain chapters in life that it's your time to work on that chapter. And the others, the other things need to be put aside to allow that growth to take place in one specific area. We oftentimes tell people on our program that it's not where you are that matters, it's where you're going, right? So um, we all have stuff to work on. Yeah. What's the thing that you're not working on um, that you need to be working on to be the best version of Gene Rawls? I'm gonna be completely transparent and honest. I am not working on my physical fitness. And professionally, if I'm not my best physically and spiritually, I can't give back to my kids or to my business. Mm. And I've been ice skating on just running on good sleep, good nutrition, and a full schedule. But the truth of the matter is what I need to be working on is total well-rounded working out health. Yeah, to, yeah. to reduce stress, anxiety, yeah. or worry, get Absolutely. your cortisol levels down. We gotta get you some aerobics in. That's Absolutely. what it sounds like, Absolutely, and that's right? what I am missing. Well, you know what? I think for the folks in the audience, we're all in need of working on things, right? In all parts of our life. So if you're working on some things and making progress, great, keep doing it. But I have my own stuff, just like Gene, that I'm not working on right now that I need to get on my list and make sure that I'm doing it. All right, so um, what's the best advice, you know, um, that you would give someone in the audience? Obviously, we have a lot of realtors with us today. We also have a lot of mortgage bankers with Supreme. We have friends and family that are listening today. But you know, um, you're very successful. You're a great family person. You're great in business. You're one of the best in business. If you're giving out a piece of advice or two today to folks in the audience, to allow them to kind of unlock and become their best, what, what's that advice that you would offer? To narrow it down to one piece is hard, but I believe that the one piece that I really need to work on myself also is when writing a business plan, have a business plan that takes you to the end. I think to be so focused on how to start the business, how to run the business, 
but what are the options in ending the business? Mm -hmm. And so it would be exit strategy is the exact word that I'm talking about. Don't forget to finish the journey when planning your business. Yeah, it's just like going on vacation, right? Yeah. I mean, if you're gonna to get to the final destination, we've gotta plan a destination, going on vacation is good, and where we might get going is good, but finishing the journey is even better. Go there Absolutely. and actually experience the full thing. Yeah. Um, that's a great piece of advice. Okay, so you've known me for 20 years. We've gotten to invest time together over the years. You've watched our business partner with yours. Thank you very much, by the way. It's an honor to partner with you. What's the one piece of advice in the spirit of best that you would give me with regard to me getting better as a leader impacting our partnership? That is such a great question, Pat. My one piece of advice that I would give you is to never take my piece of advice to have an end. I want you to continue to give back your wisdom and your culture and spirit and faith to everyone in some way, shape, or form. It may, may not need to be with an actual business entity, but you're giving back to others. My best piece of advice is that you do that well into your past 100. Well, thank you so much. I hope I live past 100. Hey, listen, thank you all for being a part of our program today. And Jean, thank you so much for your generosity and being here and for the wisdom that you just offer our crowd. Thank you. Pleasure, Pat, thank you.